What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Man Cave Podcast, local sports edition, brought to you by High V and Toyson Ford. I'm Dan Casper, and for all of you who listen to the radio show, Mondays and Fridays, we catch up on some prep and college sports with our experts, Justice Cleveland, sports director from WEAU 13 News, and Brandon Berg, sports editor at the Chippewa Herald. Well, now, if you missed those local updates, we're going to add them to the Man Cave podcast. And up first is Justice Cleveland, sports director extraordinaire at WEAU 13 News. Let's catch up on some of the local stuff here, and I want to start off with a game that you were in attendance for on Saturday. Um, I mean, we've been talking about Big Rivers uh, hockey all season long. Yep. You, know, you got Chai High over there doing, I mean, fantastic. Hudson's always a program north. But that is a massive win for an Eau Claire Memorial team to take down number one, number one ranked Spash, Spash, but take them down five to one. Yeah, I mean that game they were. That's the best I've seen Memorial play all season, which I think they would probably agree was the best game that they played all season. They from the drop of the puck to the end, mm-hmm. an intensity and a fire, and just I think defensively they played very very well, which had you know. A couple weeks ago, they had played New Richmond and struggled defensively, but they came out against Smash and just looked like they they were on a mission. Mm-hmm. And it was in, it was hard hitting. They they wanted to make a statement, and to do that against the number one team in the state shows you just how good they are. And this is you know that's the second time they've taken down a number one team this season. They took down Madison Edgewood last month as that's well. Right. Yeah. So this Memorial team is going to be strong, and it just to me it makes of a bigger thing that this the playoffs. Playoffs are going to be just so almost wide open. That was my next question for you, especially like BRC representation yeah. over there. I mean, it seems like the last few years it's always kind of been like Memorial Hudson talked about, but now you add in what Chai High is doing yeah. and, 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 you know, all that stuff. I mean, it's how many, do you know off the top of your head, like how many of these teams can get to the postseason bracket wise? I mean, is it just a few or? Well, they all make the. They all be, okay, yeah, okay. They'll all be in there. It's just a matter of where they're going to get. Like, if I, if you try to figure out the number one seed for this side of the state. Yeah. It's going to be crazy because I think Spash beat Chai High. Mm-hmm. Chai High beat Memorial. Memorial beat Spash. Hudson's got wins in there as well. Man. So I mean, it's it to me, it's going to be very, very hard to pick a number one seed. Mm-hmm. And then Chai High and Memorial will play the final game of the regular season, but by then, the you might, seed, the the seedings are already going to be decided. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward. I was talking to, to some people there after, during the game one day. I don't know if I've seen it as even, and it's statewide. I don't think there's one team that's high above anybody. Mm. There's a lot of really good teams that are going to go into this pool, and the playoffs should just be great. That's awesome. And that's going to be coming up here kind of soon. We're getting right? close. Yeah. We are. We are, you know, towards the, you know, now we get to February. I think it's mm-hmm. the middle of February we'll start the playoffs there because, man, hockey's usually one of the, you know, it's wrestling than hockey right? when it comes to playoffs. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. The playoff hockey, you know, that's an old cliche that it doesn't get any better than playoff hockey, but. And it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Uh, and I know uh, uh, Brandon was kind of touching on it on Friday, but uh, you were hitting the basketball circuit last Thursday uh, yes. <laughs> as well, too. So, I mean, you know, just kind of uh, recapping, I guess, you know, BRC-wise and, and Clover Belt, uh, if you want, like, boys basketball, uh, still Memorial, uh, Memorial for, for the BRC. They did suffer a loss to a, a really good River Falls team, and in mm-hmm. the first time they played, it was a it was a nail biter in River Falls, and it was the same thing. Mm-hmm. Memorial had a chance to to get the win there at the buzzer, but River Falls ended up holding on. I don't think it's a loss that hurts Memorial at all. River Falls is ranked up there, I believe, mm-hmm. D two. So yeah. yeah, I think it was just a good you know regular season clash that's going to help both teams as the season goes on. And Memorial's a tough team. I know Cooper Jesperson went down for I don't know at the end of the game didn't you know they they were missing him that's a big key to have when you're trying but they battled back even without him on the floor mm-hmm. that's a deep team so on the boys side yeah I mean that's that's the team and then Bloomer continues in Clover Belt but I mean Fall Creek and McDonald right there as well for, mm-hmm. you know for those teams so you got Elk Mound and Durand Arkansas and the Dun St Croix that are mm-hmm. you know. Battling, we'll battle it out, and then Dairyland. Um, Emmanuel's having a really 
decent season. You were just there, um, was it last week or so? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. my favorite. My I was going to say, that's your favorite. Gym, yep. <laughs> yeah, which they're they're going to build a new one at some point, and I'm going to cry. If they can give me a piece of the... I was going to say, put it in your uh, basement, yeah. just a <laughs> piece over there. Exactly. <laughs> I already have enough of that. I don't need any more. But, yeah, so on, on the boys' side, you look that way. On the girls' side, uh, the Memorial girls continue to play very, very well. Yeah, that's, you know... I was going to ask you about uh, the Memorial Girls because that BRC, you know, we were hearing a lot about Menominee this year. Menominee's yep. still in Menominee's, there, too. Yeah, they're still very good. And it's just like, oh, Emmanuel, or Memorial's like, hold on, you know, yep. you know we're, we're here, too. And they're off to a, or fa- or having a fantastic yeah, season. Yeah, that is. A, I was watching them on Saturday night. They played Chai High and just the depth of that team. You know, mm-hmm. they don't lose a whole lot when they have, you know, the substitutions come in and they play such tough defense. Yeah. Fanning's got that team playing very well too. So I mean, it, I mean we get to the playoffs; it's going to be fun. I, you know, I was talking about the hockey with basketball; it's going to be the same way. And, and on the the girls' side, McDonald just mm-hmm. you know continues to be that cream of the crop. Even though they've you know they've moved a division up, I Laconia is the team ahead of them in the ratings rankings, and that's who they they have their target. They they want to get to state, and mm-hmm. take down Laconia. They said that when we talked to them a few weeks ago. So. Yeah, and Elk Mound is just running the table there over in the Dun St. Croix. So mm-hmm. just it, it really is, you know, we're getting towards that point. Now, once you get to, you know, you flip that calendar to February, get that final month. Right. And then we, you know, get to March and we got playoff time. So it's going to be interesting to see how these conference battles play out before the playoffs. And even like uh, like middle border for Altoona girls, they're yes, kind of, Altoona, you know, Yeah, I don't want to leave them out. They are, you know. Michelle Poplinski mm-hmm. doing a great job coaching that team, and they're a tough team. Tough mm-hmm. team. They take on all comers too. So yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We've seen a lot of. I mean, I just, McDonald to talk about. You know, I don't go back to them real quick. They played Hudson. Ooh, that's a D one team. Yeah, and just lost by like one or two points. So that just tells you. I mean, and you see a lot of that around here. So these teams aren't afraid to challenge. Mm-hmm. Altoona's played everybody. I feel like every time I see yeah. them, they're playing a non conference game against a tough team around here. So yeah. and that's the nice thing about this area is that it just gives you the opportunity to play some of those tough teams. Because I was looking at, uh, I think I was looking at uh, the boys for, for Altoona's schedule a couple of weeks ago, and, and coming down the, the wire, I know they play Metford, and that's a connection, Paulie Hendricks, Metford grab, yep. shout oh, yeah. out over there. But there was <laughs> another game, and I can't remember what it was, but it was like a tough tough game coming up for, for them on the schedule too, which is, that prepares for, for potential postseason runs, yeah. right, to, to get ready for that. And that's Altoona, too, playing in that middle border. You see bunch, you know teams that we're not used to seeing. Chai High is who they play, so yeah. that's who it was. Yep. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, those middle border teams, I have saw, you know, Prescott played Chai High at one point. Mm-hmm. Then they, you know, played Durand. And, like, there are so many good teams around here that if you're looking for a game, it, it, it seems like there's always going to be a decent matchup going on. Absolutely. Uh, and I know we got uh, you know swimming and diving kind of going on yes. too, and yep. and wrestling maybe starting to wrap up. And yeah, wrestling is definitely getting closer and closer to the the postseason. Had a there's the white tail classic over in Menominee for the boys on Friday, and then the girls also on Saturday there. Mm-hmm. Getting hitting the mats there, so yeah, yep. getting very close towards the end of that season too. And I know what uh, well, a little over a week ago, but North uh, got the trophy between uh, them and Memorial. Yes, I love that trophy. That's that's a, that's it's great to cool have those, yeah, I do those, too. those rivalries and, mm-hmm. and, and have them, you know, get the spotlight like they do. Yep, definitely. Uh, blue gold wise, I mean, there's a lot going on. Blue golds. I know basketball just had a rough week against Whitewater, but I mean, you're talking about a girls Whitewater team that's top five, men's is top twenty five yeah. uh, over there. The women's team playing great. Mm-hmm. Just kind of ran into a buzz saw on Saturday at Whitewater, but I think they can bounce back. They had three. That's a young team. You get Kylie Mogan, who's kind of the veteran on the team, but most of that team is underclassmen or mm-hmm. around, you know. So that team has really played the last couple times I've saw them play, turned it up from the beginning of the year. That's what mm-hmm. you know. Tony England's teams do that; they just right. get better and better as you go on, and that's what you want. That's mm-hmm. what that team has done. Men's teams just having some struggles. That is a team that I feel like if they could just break through and get a big win, can turn it on. They're not; they can compete with any team. I mean, I was there when they played Platteville, and Platteville top 10 team. Mm-hmm. They can they can do it. It's just, you know, it's got to get kind of over that hump and, and turn it on. So And they got Platteville again this Wednesday, so a chance to maybe yeah, I bounce mean, back and pick up that big win. You got to, you know, if you're Matt Cyberling, you got to tell him, like, you guys nearly beat this team mm-hmm. a month ago. You can do it. It's there, and it, it is. It is there with that team. And then, you know, kind of going over, talking about men's basketball, Brody Fox and what he's been doing at Stout. 
yeah. is leading all of collegiate basketball in scoring right now. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, that, that, yeah. what, what that stout team, that's been playing a lot better as of late, too. So. Mm-hmm. And I know the women's team had high expectations or have high expectations uh, for, for this year, too, for stout. Yeah, it's been kind of, they've had their struggles. Yep. And I that that's tough when you you know that that target there the way yep. they played last year it's been on them but the second half we're we're now in the second half of the the WIC season you know these teams are really going to figure out what they can do you mm-hmm. got to make the postseason tournament and then try yep. to make a run. Uh, Blue old hockey is going to get. I mean, we're starting to wrap up the regular season here. Men's wise, they just got a series against River Falls and then Stout to, to wrap up their regular season, and then uh, the women's team. Uh, well, this is going to get interesting because they got uh, River Falls twice. Yeah, that's <laughs> a here. rivalry that is one of the best in mm-hmm. women's hockey. And mm-hmm. I've been at a lot of those games. So, yep. So it's uh, it's going to get interesting with those, and you know, you got Northland mixed in there too for for the women's team, and they got Augsburg. I think is it uh, tomorrow night? Yeah, uh, Tuesday there too. But the men's team got a stout beat point on Friday night. That's right. So the men's team's only two points away from point for the regular season. Nice. Title. I don't know what the tie. The tiebreaker probably goes to points because I think points won every match. Mm-hmm. But you never know. You know, if you can win the rest of your games and point loses two games, right? Leapfrog them in the standings. It, it, it's quite possible. So mm-hmm. yeah, and it, it. So I think the men's team want to get that regular season title, right? Or at least be up there. It's probably going to take them winning the conference tournament to get in. Mm-hmm. But that's a team that can do it. That's an experienced team. So yeah, and just uh, to kind of wrap it up here too, this blue gold wrestling program, man, with what just Tim Fader is rolling. I, I mean, what Tim Fader has done in the years since he is gone or came over, yeah. came over here. I, they got the Don Parker Open coming up this Saturday. Shout out to one of my former professors, Mr. Parker. Uh, and then you know they got uh, Stevens Point after that, and you're talking WIAC championships here just already in a couple weeks. But this is a team that's been like traveling the country. It seems oh, like. Yeah. And and they keep putting on these stellar performances all across yeah, the country. Yeah, the amount of player players, uh, wrestlers that they have that have over a hundred wins. Stricker's yeah. one that comes to my head right away. Yep. And I think you keep going like the way they are. Nationals are at are in lacrosse. This year. They are. Yep. So it's right down the road, and you know they're chomping at the bit to send not not if they can the team, but as many individuals there as they can. So, yeah. Yeah. It'll be. Fun to see what they can do and just continue what they do. And, and a lot of these guys that, you know, it's not like Fader's been there a long time. Right. You know, he this this program went from them recruiting guys on campus just to fill out a team to now being one of the top in the nation. And that's yeah. just a credit to Fader and what he has done. Absolutely. And, you know, for all the traveling they had to do across the country, they won't have to travel a whole lot in, in the, the final parts of their season because Don Parker open, Eau Claire. Stevens Point, Eau Claire. WAC championships is at Platteville, the Upper Midwest Regionals at Stevens Point, and then Nationals is at Lacrosse. Yeah, so you could tell. I I would have to imagine. Yeah, they really want to send some representation. Right, just go down the road and mm-hmm. have a chance for a national title. I think they would love that. Absolutely. So good stuff there from our good buddy Justice Cleveland, sports director for WEAU thirteen News, helping us break down what's going on locally in the world of sports. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to the Man Cave Podcast so you never miss our conversations with either Justice or Brandon Berg, sports editor of the Chippewa Herald, and that way you won't miss any of our other local sports updates with our two experts. Again, just follow and subscribe for free to the Man Cave Podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts.